Hello everyone, Marcus Thaw here. We're on the second week of the VR RPG's development, and are going to be entering a new phase soon, so let's go over what this past week has been for you guys. To start things off, I listed out all of the monsters that would potentially make it into the game, dividing them by their intended difficulty and rules. We have mooks, powerful mooks, mini bosses, and major bosses, totaling to around 23 monsters listed out for possible inclusion. At the level of mooks, we have slimes, zombies, boars, goblins, spiders, and wolves. Powerful mooks included the lizard men, skeletons, ghosts, werewolves, tigers, and tentacle beasts. Many bosses included an ogre, the minotaur, a golem, wyverns, and vampires. I'll omit the major bosses since they're probably going to be amongst the most fun and are all secrets, barring only one whose secret is rather quaint but is narratively significant, so yeah, no spoilers. With that, I figured I'd share with you some of the ideas that went into creating the monsters and the value they'll have in the game. To start, let's have a look at the designs here to illustrate my thought process a bit. Having a look at all these designs as a whole, there are probably two things that are running into your head at this point. Either A, it sucks, or B, generic. Can't do much for the former, but if you're thinking the latter, I think I'm doing something right. You'll notice in most of the designs that I have tiny doodles with initials near the name of the creature. F, F, D, Q, W, O, W, T, L, O, Z, I, R, L. And these are all initials of franchises I looked towards in order to get a reference. I mostly picked popular franchises as they have imagery that most players are bound to be familiar with. Using that as a jumping off point, I tried to strike a balance between them as well as with some of the principles of the fantasy worlds of the RPG I'm creating in order to get an interesting product. Remembering the three points from last week, exploring the VR control system, seeing VR's impact on RPGs and being done within six months, the creatures would have to be able to engage the player in an interesting way mechanically, be able to demonstrate the impact VR has on the combat experience as well as to the experience of the creature, and be easy enough to model in the time available. Applying this to the jumping off point from before, and the RPG's world's principles, we started to get some interesting results. Let's have a look at the slime for a moment. It's just a blob with an eyeball in it. Said eye or being contacted will be the beast's means to spot the player. Its body is rather formless, meaning I can literally scrounge together a blob of anything for a few seconds in Blender, and it will serve the purpose of being the slime. Making it have a downward droop to it, though, will make it seem like it's made out of a sticky, slow substance, making it reasonable that it will be slow to the player on first impression. Being slow, it will give the player a much better opportunity to attack the beast's weak point, the eye, without having to give too much chase. Since it's amorphous, it should be able to move the eye to a safer position in the event that the player starts attacking it, but being that it is slow, that means a player that's gotten used to the controls should be able to deal damage without having to be troubled by this. All this being considered though, a player who doesn't pay it much mind will likely fail to notice that it can probe out masses of slime behind them slowly along the ground, allowing them to be engulfed. Once engulfed, you can struggle to get out, but you'll be too slow to damage the eye, and its slime body will start to deal damage to you. Choices like these that enable simple mechanics as well as simple designs have been made all throughout the design process. The zombie, as you can see, is naked. It has no teeth or eyes. It's dirt colored and damaged partly to comply with lore, but also because that's easy to model. The boar has both a simple and a complex design created so far, so I can have an alternative to modeling the complex tusks and tons of spikes if I find that that's taking up too much time. The goblin only has pants on since a shirt is a more complex bit of clothing that can take time to model and can make the creature seem a lot more durable than it really is. On the whole, most of the designs are composed of a singular solid piece with the only ones that are composed of many pieces being either bosses or taking advantage of the gear the player themselves will likely be wearing. Just look at the Undead Knighter and Vampires later on to get an idea of what I mean with this. This heavily simplifies modeling for me, since Sculptress is great for high detail single piece meshes. That means I will be able to just 
quickly create something like a base mesh and blender, and then finish out the entire model within Sculptress with minimal effort. And in the few cases where there are going to be a lot of pieces, it's likely that those pieces will have some kind of value outside of the monster itself, which will merit their inclusion. These are just some of the considerations I've had in mind in the development process for the monsters, but alas, the main thing I wanted to get through in this week was the uh, character themselves, and let's just say that that was one of the weirder things to work with, actually. Truth be told, I'm not even sure how much it actually matters for the character to have any particular look. Sure, there are some considerations being made here and there to go for some mechanically relevant things, like me wanting them to have a smaller neck so it isn't too apparent as an element when looking around. But outside of stuff like that, I've got literally nothing else that needs to be in the game for the face since there really isn't that many mirrors laying around in this dungeon. Most of the design here is essentially being run by my personal preferences and some of the little things I want to add in to up the immersion. First things first, let's just get this out of the way and talk about breasts. No sidestepping it, they're going to be on the larger side. Not comically so, I'm not particularly a fan of enormous opi, but let's just say we aren't having a patanko here either. P.S. Yes, breast physics will also be a thing. Believe it or not, this is not for fan service or sexual gusto. It's an immersion factor. I've probably recounted this story various times in the past, but it bears reiterating. I have found no VR character model experience more immersive than my one experience having a female character model's breasts obscure my vision and seemingly come out for organically from where I expected my pecs to be in the Oculus Cinema demo. Or was it Cinemax? I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but yeah. Maybe I'm just being weird, or maybe it's because I'm a guy and I'm unaccustomed to that kind of thing, but I find that having a larger pair of breasts helps to give you a greater sense of presence within your avatar as its own presence is made more obvious to you. Of course, you'll be wearing clothes in the game, so it's not like it makes it too big of a difference to many of the aspects anyway, but it's still a lot more engaging than a flatter character, such as Miku as an example, which did diddly squat in this regard. <laughs> Another immersive effect I want to go for here will be with the hair. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what kind of design I want to go for, but I know without a doubt that it will be very long and have some features be prominent in the front of the character. I'm thinking of things such as having two long hair strands that hang over the shoulders, a pair of twin tails on the side, giant curls, or things such of that nature, but in all the designs, one of the most prominent features will be bangs that rest close to but not over the eyes by default. The idea here is for the hair to become a part of your character that you are aware of and figure out how to deal with organically. Initially, they should be just barely visible at the very edges of your vision within the Oculus Rift's FOV. This is something that I'm choosing to do in order to help mask the FOV limitations of the Oculus Rift by making it feel kind of like an if your hair is the part of the reason why your vision is being blocked. But in addition, as you jump around, turn quickly, fight, and do all sorts of other things, you'll find that your hair starts to get in the way of your vision until it very likely will obscure most of your vision entirely. This will be very easy for you to get rid of since all you really need to do in order to reset it will be just shake your head a little bit, but it's little things like that that should help you feel a greater sense of immersion with your character since you have to take into consideration the aspects of their own body as they're going to have a significant impact on your performance and experience of the world. Outside of these immersive considerations, there are some practical considerations to make as well. The proportions are being aimed towards a stylized tinge to avoid the uncanny valley from both a modeling and aesthetic perspective. Going for a fully true-to-life structure makes the imperfection stand out and makes the job of weight mapping much harder than I'd like it to be. Under those considerations, I'll be going for a very slender build since skinnier objects tend to lend themselves to less clipping and less visible definition. Lastly, there's the whole matter of armor, gear, clothes, and the like. Quite honestly, I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to roll with that, but at this stage I can foresee there being at least four different armor types with three retextures within each one. As was mentioned earlier, I'm thinking of having some of the monsters carry the armor themselves, making it available for you as a loot drop when you defeat them under certain conditions. Do note, the Undead Knight will be the bane of your existence. 
I have still got a while to go before I get to that stage of modeling, so I should be good to go for the immediate future, but I'll definitely be keeping in mind as things start nearing that stage of development. That just about does it for this past week's progress. I'll be starting up the actual 3D modeling this week, though these early days will be spent prepping the T-pose for the reference in the process. I'm sorry that the video is right now a little bit lax and low on content since the reality of the situation is development isn't a very pretty process and it can take a while before anything of substance really starts to form out in order for you guys to have a look at. But at the same time I think these kind of stages have value for anyone who's interested in development and that's partially the reason why I'm also kind of hiding a little few things here and there just so you guys themselves can try to have a think about just what kind of things I'm thinking about or just what kind of process they're going through since you don't really need to look at everything I'm doing in order to get an idea of that. There's a lot of things that can happen in development as well that can make things tricky. This last weekend was actually a bit troublesome for me because uh, my ethernet just suddenly died out of nowhere. I genuinely have no idea what happened to it but I haven't been able to get it to work ever since and I ended up having to buy a brand new uh, ethernet port or how should I put it? Uh, a wireless networking card, I tugged it into the PCI Express lanes, and uh, that made it so I have Wi-Fi now. It was pretty expensive though, so little things like that can just pop up in the middle of development that can make things tricky. Now I'm on Windows 10 too, since I had wound up trying to see if it was a software issue, and I just upgraded to 10 since, hey, that's another new thing, but that also kind of just made development a little bit trickier for me now that I'm operating off of a hard drive, but... Yeah, it's just been a complicated little thing here, and I'm proud to have a lot more ups and downs as things go on in the future. But hopefully you guys will be able to see this process and see if something comes out of it at the end that we can all be a little bit proud of. Well then everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. This has been Marcus Dahl, logging out.